Hi, I'm Michael Schell, and I'm kind of an old-fashioned electronic musician, so I'm delighted to be performing Cage's cartridge music as part of the Musa Circus event on Saturday, November 19th at Town Hall, Seattle. Cartridge music is a classic of live electronic music, and it dates from 1960, which was a time when it was a lot harder to do electronic music. This was before the age even of the earliest analog synthesizers, and doing live electronic music was even harder. You often had to build your own equipment or repurpose test equipment to use in live performance. Cartridge music is an example of that. The cartridges that Cage is talking about come from record players, from phonographs. This is a modern phonograph with a turntable and a tone arm, and at the bottom of the tone arm is the cartridge where the stylus attaches. It's the stylus or needle that rides in the grooves of the record that you're playing. Now that was a modern uh, that was a modern record player with magnetic cartridges. The kind of cartridges that Cage was using were the cruder ceramic or crystal cartridges that were available to him back then. And his idea was that you would remove the stylus and replace it with an arbitrary object like a spring or maybe a pipe cleaner. Now, as you can tell, these cartridges are very delicate. They aren't really designed to be handled. In fact, if you do handle them, you get lots of friction noise, you might get hum. But, as Cage says in his instructions, all events are narrowly thought to be undesirable, such as feedback, humming, howling, etc., are to be accepted in this situation. In addition to the cartridges, Cage also calls for contact microphones, such as these piezoelectrical ones that I've wired up myself. You can attach these to anything that vibrates, even a conventional musical instrument. And they, they have the characteristic that they only transmit mechanical vibrations. They aren't like this microphone that I'm wearing now, which transmits sound picked up through the air. If you imagine that you're Beethoven and you can't hear normally, but you can press your ear next to a piano and let its vibrations come into your inner ear, that's kind of the effect of a contact microphone. In addition to being a landmark of live electronic music, cartridge music is also a great example of composition that is indeterminate with respect to its performance, as Cage would put it. The score is graphical. It bears no resemblance to conventional music notation. In fact, you use it to generate your own script for the expected performance length. Let's see how it works. I start with this sheet of three shapes corresponding to the three cartridges I'll be using, one, two, and three. I'm going to overlay a transparency which has several uh, dots on it, several solid dots. These are going to correspond to sound events. Here's a, a transparency that has several circles on it. Uh, these represent the dials on amplifiers. And finally, uh, here's a transparency which contains a dotted line. I'll lay that down like this. The last transparency has a stopwatch icon, which I'll uh, apply uh, like this. All right, I'm going to follow this procedure for each minute in the expected performance duration. If there are multiple performers, each performer would follow the same procedure to generate their own script for the performance. Starting here, uh, we intersect a circle thus, and this is interpreted by Cage as a change in the tone control for the nearest cartridge, which is cartridge 3 in this case. Uh, it looks like there's an entry at about, oh, I would say 5 o'clock, and an exit at about 12 o'clock, so I can take either one of these and move the tone control for that cartridge to either of those positions. Next, we intersect a solid dot inside the shape for cartridge 3. That's a sound event on that cartridge. I'm to make a sound using the object that's in the cartridge, the choice of object, the manner in which I produce the sound. That's completely left up to me. Next, we have a dot that's outside the shape for cartridge 3. This is what Cage calls an auxiliary sound, and that's produced on an object which has a contact microphone attached to it. This is how you spice up your performances of cartridge music. You can choose uh, whatever object you might like to amplify with a contact microphone. I might use my music stand, or a zither that I've prepared in the tradition of Cage's prepared piano music. Here we intersect a circle that's inside the shape for cartridge 2. In this case, I'm going to adjust the volume for that cartridge. If I'm 
performing this work with another performer, and that performer is manipulating the object in Cartridge 2, then uh, I'm going to be changing the volume of whatever they're doing. If I turn it up enough, that might produce some feedback. There are a couple of other volume and tone change events. And here, over here in the shape for cartridge one, there's a black dot that we intersect, which is also on the boundary of the cartridge shape. Uh, this is an interesting event here because it means I change the object that's in that cartridge. As we've explained, these phonograph cartridges aren't really designed to be handled, so by changing the object in it, I'm probably going to produce some thumping sound, some hum, maybe even some feedback. But as the score indicates, all events are ordinarily thought to be undesirable, such as feedback, humming, bout, uh, howling, etc., are to be accepted in this situation. A couple of uh, additional Auxiliary sounds are encountered. This is in a portion of the dotted line where there is a loop. You see how it doubles back on itself? That means that the sound produced at that part of the line is to be of a repetitive or a sustained character. Another change in tone. And here we enter the stopwatch. I'm going to interpret this as a rest between about 33 and 43 seconds with the events on the other side happening afterwards at that point in the minute. The completed script for my performance at Musa Circus looks like this. Here's another example of a script for a performance of cartridge music. Do you recognize the handwriting? Well, that's John Cage's own handwriting. This must have come from a performance he prepared in the 1960s, probably with David Tudor. During the 1960s and 1970s, lots of composers experimented with indeterminate notation, graphic scores, even scores for live electronic music. But this piece is one of the handful that's remained a classic, and it's still being performed and recorded today. I think it's because if you follow Cage's instructions meticulously, and you get used to the sound world of the piece, it always it comes out sounding good. I think it's because it has its own timbral identity, and even the way he sets up the graphic notation, it creates a rhythmic identity to the piece, chiefly in avoiding steady beats. I'm very excited to be performing cartridge music for Musa Circus on Saturday, November 19th at Town Hall, Seattle. I hope you can come see the whole show.